how's it going everybody? Um, we're back for another video, uh, finally. Um, in this video, we'll be tackling the cooling system for the E36. We got a whole bunch of parts for it. But before we get started, um, I just wanna mention in the previous video, I received some comments saying that um, I may have put the clutch in backwards, um, which got me thinking, did I put it in backwards? So I ended up doing some research figured out that other people have put them in backwards to begin with. There's two sides. There's a side that has all the springs on it. You'll know because it's the bulkier side. Most of the time it's facing towards the transmission. But for these cars, for some reason, it's the other way around, at least with the kit that I bought. So what I ended up doing was I ended up pulling the transmission out again for like the third time, something like that. Um, I ended up flipping the clutch over and reinstalling everything. And uh, once we got it all started up, the noise was completely gone, no signs whatsoever. So I'm pretty sure those people were right. Shout out to you guys. I also decided to um, just flush the transmission fluid while we were down there. Um, might as well, right? And I just used the same stuff that we used um, for the power steering. It's just some ATF, supposedly works with manual trans as well. Um, it's by Redline, so hopefully that'll work uh, pretty well. I'm not too worried about it though. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd mention that before we get started. And yeah, uh, let's move on and uh, I can show you guys all the new parts we got for the uh, cooling system. All right, so here are all the new parts. Um, I'm just gonna work my way from top to bottom here. Uh, this is the new radiator, it's a CSF, um, all aluminum radiator uh, made specifically for E36s. Um, I was trying to decide whether or not to go with CSF or Mishimoto, they're both the same price, uh, but from what I found, these are a little bit thicker and um, should work a little bit better. It was just funny enough because the one that I currently have that I got from the junkyard is actually two and a half inches, and this one's about two inches thick, so this one's massive. Uh, I don't know where they got that one from because um, it was pulled off an E36, same car, um, but I don't think... That'll be too big of an issue. I think this will work just fine. Um, we also have some hose clamps. Uh, this is for the new hoses that we got, new silicon hoses. Um, they're Mishimoto silicon hoses. Um, so yeah, Mishimoto hoses, CSF radiator. We have a new thermostat. This is a Borg Warner thermostat. Um, I believe it's a 170 or 175. Um, I forgot, but it's a little lower. Um, so hopefully it'll open up a little sooner, um, which will help just cool everything down. Uh, we also have um, the brackets to hold down the radiator, as I lost them a long time ago. And I just use zip ties to hold that one in. Uh, so hopefully this will make it look a little less ghetto. And we also have the seals for the thermostat and for the um, housing. All right, so first things first, I drained out all the old water from the cooling system and I began pulling out all the old parts. Next, I removed the clutch fan, and I actually have the right specialty tools for this. Um, before, I'd use a pry bar and a screwdriver, and it sucked. So I decided I'd finally bite the bullet and get the right tools, and it did make it a lot easier. Um, I also removed the thermostat housing and just made sure to scrape off all the old gunk. And for the new thermostat, I drilled a small hole into it just to help with the bleeding procedure at the end. Um, I really don't understand why um, all these manufacturers stop putting bleed ports in them um, so I mean I'm just doing it to play it safe and uh, for installing the thermostat housing I just applied a bunch of silicone to it um, so hopefully we can prevent uh, any future leaks
for the new radiator hoses, um, I actually went ahead and modified the lower one. Um, I had to cut it a little bit just to get it to fit right. Um, since the uh, turbo manifold does stick out quite a bit, I also went ahead and wrapped it with just some, uh, some heat tape just to protect it and hopefully keep it from getting all burnt and crispy. So once everything was in, I went ahead and poured the distilled water, uh, filled it up as much as I could, hooked up the pressure gauge and began the leak test. All right, so I've had this pressurized for uh, about 30 minutes now. Um, and taking a look, looks like I pumped it up to 15. So now it looks like we're at 14 and a half, somewhere between 14 and 15. So that amount of time to drop by that little is a really good sign. Um, and before, before we did all this with the other radiator that I had, um, it was dropping down to like 7 psi and staying there so massive improvement um, i think it's pretty safe to say we don't have any leaks uh, currently um, it's normal for it to drop just a little bit but the fact that it's hasn't even dropped by a full psi is a really good sign so i'm hopeful that we fix the um, leaks that we were having before and hopefully um, we won't have any more problems so i'm still not done um, right now everything is just kind of barely held in place right now um, We still need to put the brackets on here to hold the radiator in place because it moves around a lot And the hose on the bottom that connects to um, the reservoir is loose And so is the reservoir itself is loose uh, I'm gonna have to figure out how to hold everything properly um, Earlier in the video I did say I got the uh, plastic brackets to hold this in place But I forgot that the plastic brackets need um, a rubber grommet to hold them in place. See how that's really thin and this is really big. So we're missing the grommets. So I'm gonna have to go to pick and pull or find something um, probably tomorrow um, to get this properly mounted and to get this properly mounted. You know what, I just changed my mind. I think it's better if we just make something on our own. Um, these suck anyways. Uh, they're a pain to install and I always forget how to take them off uh, so instead I think it'll be best if we just go ahead and make some custom brackets it'll be pretty easy to do thinking about it I can just get a piece of uh, sheet metal aluminum something a little thick uh, give it a quick bend to slide in place here uh, make a little slot that way we can adjust it and uh, drill out a hole install a rib nut and that way the bracket will be able to slide freely so we can make some adjustments and pull it towards the front here and then tighten it down so I think that's the next uh, step of the process here so screw it let's just go ahead and make some brackets to hold the radiator in place up top Alright, so we are now finished up with the brackets. The radiator is held in uh, pretty snug. Um, I'm not done yet. I still need to polish them up a bit more. Uh, there's a couple scratches on them and just swap out the bolts for some button head uh, style bolts. Just something that doesn't protrude as much as these. This is just all I had. Um, but yeah, now that we're finished up with that and the radiator is held in place, um, we can move on to finishing up the final touches of the cooling system like the um, 
reservoir here, as well as the line that runs underneath um, that connects to the to the reservoir to um, the Y pipe over there. Um, we still need to uh, just kind of figure out how to set everything in place for that. And uh, we'll do a final bleeding procedure and we'll start the car up. So for now, let's jump into getting all the small stuff done. Then uh, we'll start it up. so the coolant bleeding um, was successful everything went uh, really good um, we got everything bled properly and I was keeping my eye on the temps and everything seemed to be sticking to around 180 degrees Fahrenheit which is fine for what we're doing so the next thing I'm gonna do which is kind of the final touches is uh, introduce some of this stuff to the system this is water water if you guys haven't heard about this, it's made by Redline. We have a couple of Redline products already. Um, hashtag not sponsored. Um, but um, essentially, it's just going to help to cool the cooling system. <laughs> uh, so there you can see, supposedly it runs up to 20 degrees cooler once this is introduced. Don't know if this is going to work too well. This is kind of just me experimenting with it. Um, so I guess we'll see once we take it to the track. But now that we don't have any more uh, coolant leaks, this should help a lot and the whole system as a whole should work a lot better uh, hopefully no more coolant leaks everything is working great so far uh, the e36 is looking more and more like a drift car and less like a pos which is a good thing um, cooling system is not completed and i don't know if you guys noticed but the clutch noise is entirely gone so uh, that kind of confirms the theory that it was on backwards um, whatever we got it fixed and now the cooling system is fixed we also have the transmission um, oil replaced uh, we got a lot of stuff going on here we don't have much left to do the one thing that I'm considering is whether or not we should um, add an oil cooler which I think we definitely should. Um, we especially need an oil temperature gauge just so we can actually monitor um, the temperature of the oil, figure out we, if we actually need a cooler. But when I was bleeding the cooling system, I was checking everything over with a temperature gun and it seems as though um, the turbo gets hot really quick, even when it's idling. So um, it gets me a little worried. Um, I think I'm definitely gonna end up getting either an oil temp gauge um, at the very least, but most likely just upgrade uh, the whole oiling system with uh, a proper oil cooler as well as an adapter from the oil filter. Um, I've been looking at this for a while, so I kind of have an idea of what to get, and I'll definitely make a video on it. Um, but yeah, I would probably get at least something else done uh, before we go to the track, but we'll see. Might just send it. Um, still not done. Still need to kind of just give the car a whole check over, uh, make sure everything is installed properly and bolted up. And I also have to do an alignment. With that being said, um, I'm very excited. We got many plans and I guess we'll just have to wait and see what we'll do uh, next week um, in the next video. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.